Katie Barth the Oval. Uh, I don't know if that was one of your house, but um, I learned real quick to fess up. Because I was the one that always did those things. Okay? Sorry. There you go. But y'all can hear that my But the truth will set you free. It won't hinder you. And I've known any person in this nation, in this world, that doesn't want to be free. You know, freedom means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But just the idea that we can gather here today, because he is the way, the truth, and the life, we have the freedom. Now, we understand it's not that way all over the world. But it's great to be free. Then, the last thing, he says, I am the life. Now, I think probably on earth, Jesus' best friends <coughs> were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus uh, in the town of Bethany. Uh, they, uh, they hung out a lot together. Uh, and this verse, John 11, 25, comes right after Lazarus said, Die for the first time physically. Um, and, you, and you know the story. Uh, if you don't, let me give you a, just a short. Uh, Lazarus had died. Jesus got the word that he died. And Jesus essentially took his own sweet time to get there. Um, but, you know, you kind of wonder sometimes. Why did he, but he didn't. He knew what was about to take place. He knew what he was, God was going to allow him to do. Of course, when he come, if he would have just come earlier, he would have died, she says. But then, Jesus makes this statement in verse, verse 25 on the wrong page. 11.25. I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, though he may die, he shall live. Um, you know, you know, you know, I'm just going to die if that happens. You know, if, if my kids do that, I would just die. Um, um, but understand, we put our faith and trust in the person that is the way, the truth, and the life. We don't have to worry about dying. Now our physical bodies at some point will fail if Jesus, if Jesus decides to not come and gather his church before. We're going to physically die. But if we place our trust and faith in him, that is something that we don't have to worry about. And I'm, I'm encouraged by that. Now, let me be honest with you. I don't want to die. I don't want to live forever. I want to be a pain to my kids when they get older. As, as my mother says, I want to be old enough, just old enough to aggravate you for the rest of your life. Okay? Now, some of you, some of you probably may understand that with your kids if they were anything like me. Um, I, I joke around uh, the I said this before, I was like, James Dobson called my mother before he wrote the book, Strong Little Child. I think one of the couple of chapters made things directly about me. But, but understand. But there's no reason to fear death if you've placed your trust in him. Now, if you haven't, there's a reason to fear. Because you can't, you can't be good enough. You can't check all those bombs, sunscreen. I tithe. I did all this. I was 34, 35 before I truly put my faith and trust in Him. Um, and I started leading music in church at the age of 16. Now you figure that out now. You can know a lot about Him and not know Him. Question today is not do you know all the stories, but do you truly 
who know him as Savior and Lord. Um, it's great to know all the details. But if the details are all here, <coughs> and never get here, sorry. You're just a very educated biblical person and you're not a believer. According to what I understand. You've got to trust him. Not just believe he was a teacher and all that, but really trust him with your whole heart, with your family's future, with your finances, with your whatever. But you need to just put your trust in him. You know, and um, as we as we look at the Christmas stories, the way the shepherds found the the manger was because of life. The way the wise men found the toddler Jesus, if you will, was because of light. All of us, uh, from time to time, get to a dark place. Um, and thank goodness, Jesus is always willing to shed light in that dark place. That dark place is your house, or your place of employment, maybe a, an establishment you like to go to. But Jesus' life will come in. And all he asks us of us is to take that first step. And that's what our invitation song talks about. It just talks about stepping to the light. It doesn't say, hey, you need to figure everything out. And then take a step. Oh, no. Uh, it's kind of like a baby, you know. They don't, they don't ask like Joe's like he's gonna be walking up the lawn and everything, you know. In that first step, is he is he gonna ask, how do I do this? No, he's gonna take that first step. He goes, okay. He's gonna take that second step, and then he's off running. And then Carl and Sarah get tired. <laughs> oh, they're already tired. But, you know, but and that's all Jesus asked us to do. Just take that first step and understand the gospel, the good news, is exclusive. Now, I, I might, you know, if you put it up to me, I might have maybe made a couple ways to get there. Like if, if you're going to Houston, there's a couple ways to get there. But if you want to be with Jesus in heaven, there's only one way. If he said, I am the way, the truth, I'm going. And in that state, no one comes to the Father except through me. And that's why he came. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you. 